Hello, everybody. My name is Harpal Kocher, and thank you for taking the time to attend this webinar. And uh, so today I will be talking, focusing mostly on summer program applications. I'll use the UC Cosmos uh, as a framework for you to um, bring home or to, for me to bring home the point that I make about strategy. I'll first talk about a summer program strategy, which is a little different from when you apply for college applications, what that is different, uh, overview of the program, the clusters, the expectations, the, uh, the goal of the program. We'll talk about what it means to apply for or to present your activities, what kind of a spike you want to present in your activities, the choice of recommendations, recommenders that the teachers who are going to make the recommendations, what should they be writing in the recommendations? That's a big part of it. And finally, the much awaited personal essay. We'll talk about how to go about the process for brainstorming the essays. And then we'll talk about how to write uh, cluster specific, which means specific to the topic or the class that you're applying to. We'll talk about what are the best practices for that. Just a little bit about myself before we get started. I've had experience with uh, college applications and summer programs very much firsthand, uh, sending my own daughter through these processes, My both my daughters. And uh, my older daughter went to a top 20 college in the US. Uh, I am a first generation immigrant parent uh, with about 25 years of experience working in the US in the corporate environment and for the last seven years in uh, college admissions. I am also, I've taken formal education in college admissions at Stanford and at uh, UC San Diego. My goal is to make my students apply for at least seven to eight uh, summer programs when they are uh, in um, grades 9th through 11th and then of course in 12th grade to apply for amazing colleges. How do you apply? Uh, what looks good on the application? What genuinely makes your student sizzle? And really how do you go about even getting scholarships for some of these applications? Beyond the um, uh, summer college applications, I also provide college admission services. So uh, not only it can we help you with writing very good essays, putting together college lists, uh, finding very good internships, kind of on the lines of what we're talking about today, uh, but putting a multi-year college plan and you know never get surprised along the way, make sure everything is handled in the right time, having a full-on plan, I ex excel at that. Uh, the area I love most is uh, essay brainstorming. It's uh, to me, when I brainstorm with students, it's about really uh, helping students identify something they didn't know about themselves about in the past, and uh, some new aspects about a student's potential. I almost think of myself as an architect, as a sculptor chiseling away at a raw, powerful stone and then giving it some shape all in a matter of a few months. So that really gives me a kick. So any of that, any help you need on scholarships, merit tuition, reducing tuition costs, I've actually gone through that with uh, my own daughters who went to very expensive schools. So happy to tell you about that. Okay. So now talking about specifically about summer programs, uh, I have an actual, another video which will go into all generic summer programs, many of them across med school, architecture, you know, engineering, all the programs, but let's talk specifically a STEM based program called UC Cosmos in the state of California. Um, very well known program, about 5,000 students apply to it about thousand get in the program is uh, managed by faculty not by teaching assistants and it is done at four different campuses in the u.s so you pretty much apply for one campus amongst the four uh, amongst the four that i've called out and within the campus you can apply for two clusters i always recommend students to apply for more than one cluster not just apply for one because chances of getting in are low it's a very competitive program when you look at the program goal and this is an area you want to look about looked at anytime you apply for summer program is think of their vision where they see their world going or what kind of students are they looking for uh, clearly here they are looking to build a community of scholars so academic thinking foster analytical thinking experimentation you know this program is pretty much you know uh, set up for um, uh, for academia so you know judging by this it's very research focused so you would be advised to stay within like a related theme for your essays which showcases that uh, academia side of who you are um, your grades will matter significantly to get into this program especially math and science based grades uh, the more the merrier if you've done physics chemistry and biology even better um, if your scores are not in the 3.5 gpa or higher range in math and sciences Probably not a good idea to apply. This is a hard program to get into, okay? But that said, there are many other programs you can apply to, you know, reach out to me. Happy to help you guys with some of that too. Moving into the actual application dimensions that they look at when they make these determinations. Uh, I typically have six uh, quadrants to my jigsaw puzzle about college applications. Uh, 
um, GPA demonstrated interest, personal ins- essays, and recommendation letters still are very important for the UC Cosmos or any other summer program. What goes out is extracurricular activities or your uh, scores at SAT, ACT. Those don't matter. Now, within the things that do matter, your GPA, your APs, advanced placements, IBs, any concurrent uh, uh, programs that you've signed up with, which show interest in that cluster becomes super critical almost like more than 65 percent in my opinion that they matter your essays do matter but that's really to get the whole picture together to put a whole package in front of them so essays do matter but not as much as people think an essay a good essay well-written essay uh, showcasing your interest in the field it in itself is worth its weight in gold as long as your gpa is going to carry you with you I think the area most students make a mistake is they don't think about recommendations as much. They think of bringing in teachers who like them, um, which is important, but you want to bring in recommendations from teachers from A, from STEM, from math and science, and teachers who can actually talk to your character, to your personality. They can vouch for some stories about what you've done, which becomes very important, okay? So make sure we talk more about what that weightage is. So now let's talk about the activities that I emphasized, uh, you know, uh, that you talk about. So you're allowed to put in only two activities. Uh, they say you need to put one, but you are not obligated to do one only, but I would say put two. Um, make sure they are STEM related activities in this, as I'm showing in the stated examples. Your second activity that you show could be a little different, yet it should be mostly around showing some augmentation to STEM. So for example, performing arts, music, so communications, entrepreneurship, all of these have frameworks that can overlap with the STEM. I mean, you know, you don't want to be talking about your track running and stuff as an ex- example of an activity uh, within uh, Cosmos, okay? Because you really have an opportunity to write about two activities, uh, 50 characters for each activity. Um, so making sure you put the right spike to showcase your value in there, uh, which we'll talk about the star technique down the line, situation, uh, you know, uh, uh, action, the, the results, everything in less than 50 characters per, per, app, uh, per activity. Next is the focus on references, which is talking, getting your teacher recommendations is a super, super critical part of it. And you don't want teachers to just say, yeah, he's good. And, you know, he did well, or, you know, to say the obvious, like if you've done well in the classroom, you don't want the teacher just saying that. You don't want them to write just something cookie cutter. You want them to give some story, something about you, which showcases you as a unique person, uh, showcasing ideas about great activity. Uh, all that becomes very important. The um, Try to make their job easier, which is uh, when you send them, a, uh, when they agree to do your recommendation letter, sending them a note saying, this is why I chose you becomes a very good reason. So sending notes in there about reminding the teacher of them particular times, they had a meaningful co- encounter with you. Uh, it's very important because then they can turn it around, just make some changes and send that and becomes important. Uh, you can also send a copy of your essays uh, in advance to the user's teacher. So when they put a recommendation, they can see what you're talking about. Finally, last but not the least, your recommendations should stay blind. Uh, You should never have an opportunity to look at your uh, recommendation. That's an insult to the teacher if you do that. Um, And your recommendation, by the way, means nothing if it got uh, the, if you got to see it, okay? So next, let's talk about the personal essays. You know, this is an area most uh, students struggle with to understand how do they write about personal essays? What do you write? It's literally like a, a person looking in the dark like this dude here is trying to cross this bridge, which I would personally never want to cross. But, uh, you know, what do you write in a personal essay? It's something which baffles a lot of people. Uh, to make it very simple, it's a, uh, it's it's something about you which your transcripts are not talking about. It's like literally the uh, the activity behind the activity is what you're trying to talk about. Something which the academics the team does not know about you, but in some ways is related to the application. Okay. Um, so the question, the 300 word essay, the personal essay is highlight a skill, talent, challenge, or opportunity that you think will help us know you a lot better. They are talking, it's a research oriented program, asking you in a fairly generic way, tell us on those four lines, skill, talent, challenge, opportunity help you learn more. If you ask me, uh, research thinking is should be a cornerstone, talking about some kind of research, some kind of intellectual curiosity, some kind of growth mindset that you've shown, some tenacity of thinking is the highest level thing. You want to talk about some challenges you faced and overcome, the opportunities you've seized. Last but not the least is the talents or skills one has developed. Those are mostly table stakes. You're expected to have very good skills, skills or talents, but you know, bringing those in the context of the research or the challenges faced in the context of what you've done in research is a fair play, but do not make it become a kitchen sink, okay? You don't want to just throw in stuff over there just because you're under flex your muscles. 
make it conversational something like this if i asked you a question saying you know tell me something about yourself that i don't know about which will help me make a decision how will you approach that discussion you will start by talking about let me tell you a story about something maybe you worked at a barista as a barista at starbucks but you're talking of an entire story how you built your life around it maybe you talk about a, a trip you took to genentech or you went to the science exposure exploratorium or uh, you know some place where or some 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 maybe uh, scouts or some excursion you do and you're talking about a lot of things about your grit about your personality within the context of that without obviously saying what um, what they want to hear um, it's supposed to be something implicit so you want to demonstrate your values your personality very implicitly and it has to be conversational and we'll talk about what the star methodology means in terms of communicating in a very methodical manner have a theme to what you're going to talk about right and uh, these are have research focused topics i've actually put some research topics in the right hand side of this page where you could talk about um the goal is for you to use one such topic as a fulcrum to express more details showcasing your values and what you've done about it so like i said challenges opportunities values skills talents that you've developed maybe using one of these is a great way to start uh, you could have uh, you know an interest in these things you might not have done academia scholastic changes over here but maybe you've done some course at a course online maybe you read some journals about it maybe you did some work you published something in the school magazine about it um think of you know what applications of the research topic they intrigued you and how do you see yourself contributing to the field of scientific knowledge based on this remember this is an academia stem focused research program this is not uh, it's not like uh, you know one of those uh, entrepreneurship programs bank of america program or falcon or any of those this is unique it's you talking talking about demonstrating how you made the most of the resources that have been available to you to drive a passionate purpose that you have carved for yourself now it sounds very grandiose but trust me if you just take a topic like for example uh, let's take one of these topics say like plagiarism or literacy in america why your heart beats for it and what kind of thinking have you done about it what are the ways to solve this problem what have you seen as a problem that's good enough a simple one like a prayer in school should it be allowed should it not be allowed you bring a perspective to it could be cyber security let's take another one uh, take white collar crime we know of some amazing white collar crimes that have happened recently and how people don't land up going in the jail and maybe you've got some encounters working with some jail inmates so you you've helped in the past and you know you can bring a perspective the sky is the limit you could take one example it's about storytelling and bringing in those values about your talent your perspectives your skills your opportunities your challenges all within that right so don't worry about a grandiose topic but as long as you can hook something around it it's good so the other thing you could do is you could um, you could talk about some personal challenges right you've got a research topic um, and you could talk about some challenges within that maybe you're doing some research or maybe you don't even want to use any of those research topics you want to just talk about teen challenges growing up like transition issues moving from one school to the other maybe moving homes maybe there's been a disruption in the family life and in relationships talk about that but again don't because this is a stem based subject you want to talk about intellectual curiosity and research based thinking around whatever you thought about um maybe you have had low grades initially how you made a change what did you study more about the subject to make a change in yourself you know think about that um you could talk about social anxiety and panic attacks this happens to uh, teenagers more than Uh, i would like to admit to it but depression lack of energy motivation hopelessness uh, you can make a whole topic a research perspective just from that you could talk about testing anxiety like going blank in an exam how do you fix it how do you realize what research did you do to understand what people go through and how did you come around it for yourself uh bullying at school standard topic conflict with a teacher is a big one right you get into a conflict over a particular theory or a particular stand you take and you could talk a lot about it so think about those things those are challenges you could talk about next you can talk about learning opportunities right you could talk about opportunities that you've leveraged maybe you became a a teaching assistant or you've worked on the newspaper in the and uh, where you've written a very thought provoking article which elicits uh, campus wide discussions okay perhaps you've been involved with canvassing for a local politician for a specific cause or maybe you demonstrated leadership somewhere in a club initiative 
okay all fair games for having a discussion so my point of bringing this up is for you to get thinking about what could be uh, the art of the possible for you now the skills i'm calling out in this next slide here is you could use these to explain your work ethic or your research topic all in a better way so don't hook don't make this the main theme but becomes the values the skills that you acquired for that particular topic you're talking about for example um let's say uh, time management work ethic leadership collaboration these are table skills table stakes or i would say table skills you have to learn in high school to survive but if you have a strong point of view around it then make some of these skills within the values you show of the other topics but don't make this a subject of its own okay now your essay is supposed to it showcases your character values okay things that your your transcripts cannot easily communicate okay so let's talk let's understand a little bit more about the values you can use to you can choose to showcase okay the conduit to showcase your values is your personal essay for the most part and the the your demonstrated interest choices are through your uh, cluster essays okay for lack of uh, more cosmos specific terms but that's what it is when you look at these uh, you know value or these character strength classifications i've called out some high impact ones the ones i think i've put them out in stars like creativity appreciation of beauty curiosity or judgment of your of character i right? put some details about it try to imagine these things within your thinking and make maybe make start putting a framework around that um more maybe on leadership how you encourage others how your groups were being made how did you create a good example in fact we'll use this in one of the star examples a little later but how you love to learn new things how you enjoy the process of learning and observe yourself you know changing over time and your values getting changed as a part of it it's a great way the how do you master new skills uh, teamwork or make sense of meaning think of how like sense of meaning right how do you find a meaning a sense of purpose how do you be connected with life and when the lack of that what was your life like so we talk about these things bringing the whole value together it can come up with a beautiful essay now let's talk about uh, the actual um, storytelling mechanism and why is it important to have a methodology to explain a story so it's best you want to write essays using a relatively easy format to understand okay concise and highlight essential things you have done okay one such way to explain the story is using the star methodology which focuses on the situation which is what was the background give a context like you know kind of get the person grounded very quickly with what the situation is what was the challenge which is the task involved what was expected out of people uh, what needed to be done and why it had to be done make it very clear so you give a situational context you spoke on what the challenges were then you specify action what did you have to do or what your team had to do or who did you inspire who could you not inspire what tools did you use whose help did you use maybe some teacher some mentor got involved and finally explain the results the results matter a lot explaining the the closure putting the bow on top of saying what was the accomplishment was the tangible result did you get a recognition quantify do not leave things just qualitatively quantify put them in some kind of a numerical form so let's take an example of a situation okay uh, we are explaining a skill within star so the question is like you don't need to know the question in some way but tell me a time when you had to provide a difficult feedback to a team member on and some of the team members are not as doing as well as the expectant vision was the group was and how this person was called out and in a very respectfully explain how the actions were impacting the others in the team how empathetically the discussion was to make sure they can help this person versus just calling him out and you know calling him that you need to you suck and stuff okay what was the impact how did things get better did you did the guy just leave the group did the person actually get better over time what was the problem what did you learn the whole thing so it's really the art of explaining the whole situation and the you know your own vulnerability the other person's vulnerability what you learn learned out of the process is really what it is it's not as important what happened it's how you explain and you showcase your values out of the whole process that's what we really care about let's take another example like this case it's actually a personal essay using a star uh, example which is to present a personal essay explicitly when you aren't given any main specific literally like the cosmos application which is saying is there anything you want to tell us to tell us that we should know about you right so if you look at this example this person applied the knowledge of these uh, pathogenic bacteria shows intellectual curiosity on how he showcased intellectual curiosity the 
task explanation is eloquently done the rigor in the sequencing of the bacteria for lack of automated tools that's apparent so like this is the work you have to do how did they make it happen and what was the outcome right uh, overall this opportunity uh, overall this opportunity to lead to an independent project solidify my decision to pursue a phd right explains that in a very very simple example let's take another example of something of say leadership um, look at a time when he took a leadership role so he explains in the sophomore year at a college uh, he became part of a chairman of the committee responsible for organizing uh, of bringing the the task was the woman the committee had a particular ta- charter to bring uh, you know uh, women's health affair to bring in community resources within the reach of the hall uh, what was the action so what he did bringing 300 representatives and organizing into sm- small groups now this is not a very earth shattering example but it explains how he took star and took uh, to a club and explain how he did all the work around it. Okay? So that's really what this is. It's doing the success for 12 people group, how this thing was done. And, uh, you know, it's it's a good way to explain the concept. Now, with that, let's now move to cluster focus essay, which is really why you chose that cluster or that topic. Uh, why do you think you are uniquely positioned to help out over there? Wow, what you will bring to the table to the discussions in the cohort to the other class classmates? Uh, what is it that from a diversity standpoint you bring that the others might not have? And where is this going to take you? Read the cluster details end to end. If the contents don't make sense, forget it. Okay. If you can make somewhat sense to you, research, find some more details about the cluster, or look up online. And if this starts making sense that by learning this, maybe you could solidify a thinking to go to a particular career. That's a good enough reason to go there. Okay? But then bring to the table, what do you have knowledge wise? Like one of my students was applying to a, one of the clusters where he didn't know enough about biology, but he was kick-ass at programming and they were not expecting. They said entry-level computer programming knowledge will be good. He comes and says, I'm going to double down. I know computer programming really well. I've done this stuff in biology. I'm going to come in and I'm going to kill it over here. Okay. Research your teacher's profiles, their past, their research that they're doing. Uh, you know, maybe follow them on LinkedIn and talk about how they inspire you. Ultimately, academia is all about sucking up to a lot of people, you know, showing the research that you've done about the teacher, why you find that thing good. Okay. Um, if they have more prerequisites, then, then that uh, cluster typically is less competitive. So you can play the reverse psyche of applying students and then decide if you want to go for that program or not. Okay. These are the clusters at in Cosmos. Davis has like what 11 clusters, fairly focused around uh, STEM oriented, not as uh, computer science oriented, but mostly around uh, sustainable engineering and uh, you know stuff like that. So. Um, Irvine has similarly, you know, principles around, uh, you know, what they do, which is Irvine is definitely very data science oriented, has some things going on in genomics called, meta, uh, you know, bioengineering. Um, they tend to be a lot more on the biomedical side of things, which is just Irvine's personality. Irvine thinks in those terms. Santa Cruz is uh, fairly focused on tech, you know, in fact, because they're next to the ocean, you see a lot of oceanology, oceanology and environment exology uh, concepts coming out, a lot of physics. I was actually surprised to see game design over here as well, but you know, that's surprising. But sometimes you see a few clusters come in, which are not really from that group. San Diego is a very impressive place. I just love San Diego stuff. It's also a very competitive cluster to get a uh, campus to get into. But uh, some of their programs around computers in everyday life, you look at their robotics inventor, uh, introduction to autonomy, autonomous vehicles, really, really, really good programs. So look at some of these programs again, this, uh, um, you know, uh, you can just use this and uh, make up decisions where you want to go with it. In terms of assignments, I've put up like six questions, you know, very, I expect you to put up like, write no more than two, three lines per question. And if you don't know the answer, that's fine. Just let it go. But when you once when tell me a time when you overcame adversity or a fear of failure, um, you know, just something where it was, you know, uh, you were scared of failing and you overcame that. You're just a basic story. I'm looking for some story. My goal is for these six things. Give me some six stories about your life, uh, experience of life, event, how it changed you, the relationship you had with someone and what you learned. What you will notice is from just these six questions, you might actually find some research topic or something which will connect with your personal essay really, really quickly. At the very least, it'll show your values very quickly. You start putting something together. So focus on quality, the story narrative, uh, not as much on the on the language, uh, community, the impact on yourself, um, 
and then you can go into the next stage assignment which has been what i've been difficult in you uh, difficult in your life how you overcame a problem through your own ingenuity very similar questions to what you saw in the prior slide uh, assignment but you are you're expected to expand you're expected to literally have your parent or somebody do a mock interview and all the answers have to be kind of in a um, uh, in a conversational format okay so make it loose make it uh, make it something which is creative not as very very formal and then submit send it over to me i'll happily review all that with you and then we can start working on the slide from there okay so thank you very much with that and you know you've got some code uh, you know free uh, essays and stuff which i put up on google classroom uh, join my classroom uh, there's a university programs list i can help you with the essays for cosmos i can help you but i look forward to being of help to this to you